I thought you had to read. Good evening to all. Greetings to all. Welcome to our police committee meeting, City of Grantville Police Committee meeting, June 22nd, 2017, 5 p.m. Uh, we now call this meeting to order. As to Councilman King, if he will lead us in the invocation and please remain standing for the Pledge to Allegiance. Lord, we ask you to allow the, your light to shine down upon this meeting tonight and allow us to make the proper decisions that need to be made. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Can we get a motion to accept the agenda? I'll make the motion. We accept the agenda. I will not second that motion. Our first order of business will, uh, first of all, I'd just like to say I met with the city manager and our mayor on the other evening. And this is just an informational uh, meeting just to give you insight on what we discussed. And uh, so the citizen, those that are not here, we know that the place is filled, it's just flowing. So we're going to be sure we tell those who did not show up exactly what we talked about. So our first order of business on the new business is the Splash Fund. And I will just start this off and then I'll ask my colleague if he has uh, anything uh, to add. Uh, I was able to find out from our CM the fund balance for police cars is uh, a negative balance of $11,435.60. However, uh, at the end of September, they will be in a positive. Uh, so that's good news. It, it may be negative now, but it's going to be positive. And positive is always good. Do you have anything to add? No, ma'am. OK. Uh, I also learned at uh, this meeting that one engine was blown uh, in one of the police cars. However, it was on the warranty. And so uh, that's good. It didn't cost the city uh, any money. Uh, however, it is my understanding that our chief and our lieutenant does need a car, so that will be discussed uh, in the future, I'm sure. Uh, our next, uh, and that would fall under the budget. Uh, you have anything to add to the budget? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. Uh, our second uh, thought of concern was the resignation of uh, one police officer and possibly uh, the departure of another one. And I'm sure our chief of police can give us insight uh, on that. Uh, so, you know, we want to always keep uh, our good policemen, but you know, people do come and they do go. And we know we're going to get uh, wonderful people to replace them. Do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Uh, no, I just have to put it here. Okay. Uh, Madam Chairman, if I might add, yes. I would suggest we put an ad in the paper saying, similar to what we did before in the Noonan Times Herald, that we're accepting applications. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. Reshaver. Uh, we also discussed police cars, and I was told uh, we have, is it 12 cars? Do we have 12 police cars? We have 12 police cars plus two that are spare cars. Okay. So, and we also have 12 uh, full-time officers and three part-time officers. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, so, 
we like to move in an expeditious way. So according to the agenda, at this time, we will ask, unless you have something, you want to wait on the Chief of Police? Um, I could probably wait. I'm interested in who resigned and what the reasoning was on that. Okay, according to what I was told, it was Chris Thompson and John Davis, possibly, but our, our Chief of Police can give us that uh, insight. So at this time, I will ask uh, Chief Whitlock to come and give us uh, sure. his insight. <clears throat> Thank you, ma'am. We did have two officers resign last week. Uh, we have one officer leaving going to Coyote County Sheriff's Office, and the other was leaving going to uh, Troop County Sheriff's Office. And the reason they gave uh, is monetary value. Uh, one officer is leaving here, and he's going to start out in Troop County making $19 an hour, where we make $15 an hour. That's one going to Coweta County, and the one in Troop County, uh, I think right now they're making right about the same thing we are, but uh, <clears throat> it was put in the paper and it was told to others that uh, I think they're getting a 15% raise this October and a 15% raise next October. So they're leaving because of benefits and, 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 the, and the salary. That's the biggest problem we have right now because, as you know, here in the city of Grantville, uh, the only really benefit that we have right now is take-home cars, and we've got some little problems with that I think we're supposed to discuss next week. I'm not sure exactly. Um, am I not right, Mr. Um, Mr. Allen? Aren't we next week? We have a meeting with you, you myself, the mayor, the city attorney, and whoever else. I believe it's Thursday at 2 p.m. Yes, sir. So, but the biggest problem is the benefits and the salaries. I mean, they're, you know, these are these are guys that you know, have to look at the rest of their life, and that's what they're looking at, is trying to know where the money is, and that's we just got a problem right now, and a lot of cities are because these other agencies paying more money than what we're paying, and that's that's where they're going to. So, uh, uh, Mr. Al's got a copy of the resignations. We put them in a, in a personnel file, and you know you can look at both of them. You know, they were happy with the with the city here, happy with their their job here. They just they just need more money, and that's I'm afraid we're going to start seeing that from a lot more uh, some other people here too. So. We just need to start see what we can look at about you know trying to catch up with these other people. I know it's hard to do, but we're going to do something. Nice. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I think we we need to sit down at the table of reasoning <laughs> <laughs> and uh, see what works best. Yes, ma'am. You know the governor just gave this big twenty percent raise, and right now uh, it's a really sad thing to say a trooper. A person starts trooper school this week and he graduates, and I think it's like 21 weeks. Um, he's making $47,000 a year. That's his first year. No, excuse me. Right since he got a trooper school, it's $47,000. After he can, can, uh, finishes one year as being a trooper, he's making $52,000 a year. And I'll tell you right now, that's what I'm making here, and I've been in law enforcement 34 years. So I mean, it's just. We're going, to have to, we're going to look at something because, you know, it's just everybody's going to be going where the money is. It's going to start having a hard time getting people here. Yes. And, and we do want to um, get good people here and we want to keep our city. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And right now, we, 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 yes, ma we've got a real good department here now. And, you know, the people really like it here. You uh, know, we're very fortunate they're staying here. And, but, you know, right now we have no retirement. And, you know, we just got, we, we're, the city's going to do something. Because you know we're going to start losing more officers if we don't, and I don't want to see that because we do have good officers here now, and the, the citizens in the city like them. Uh, we're staying very proactive, and you know it's just I just I just hate to see the officers you know start leaving like this. So, well, you know, Mr. Whitlock, I agree. Uh, we don't want our officers to leave, but I also understand that you know we have to look at the total picture and see uh, what we can do, what others are doing. Cities our size yes, and all of that. I think uh, once we, um, uh, the, our CM and our mayor and all of us really sit and look at the yes, total picture and see yes, what we can do, when we can do it. Yes, ma'am. Well, I definitely I have to trust the city manager. I know he can, he yeah. can make things happen. So I do, I do appreciate working with him. He's been a, a great asset to the city. I know that. I agree. And you know, um, I will say this: I have not heard any citizen. Uh, complain uh, in the last two years about the police department. At least they have not complained to me. 
Yes, ma'am. And if they complain to others, sometimes you know how the wind just blows it in your direction. Yes, ma'am. And so I and I applaud you all for uh, keeping our city safe and for the citizen not complaining. Yes, ma'am. So if they're not complaining, then they they don't feel like they're being mistreated. Yes, ma'am. I'm really happy about nothing negative in the paper. Also, that's one good thing. We've been very positive in the paper in the last two years. So. Yeah. I appreciate that. That's so. good. Yes, ma'am. Anything else? Uh, no, I, I think that's good. Thank you, uh, Mr. King. No, I, th I think you've answered all my questions as well. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Okay. Uh, we have any citizen comments? <laughs> Mr. Yeah, Doctor, I don't everything else. Not what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph Doctorman, 379 Bohannon Road. I actually, I had not planned to speak, but listening to the chief just now, uh, he's right. Our cops are underpaid. On one hand. On the other hand, you tell me how much money you guys got. In your total budget. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think the budget this year is $2.4 million, and roughly $1 million of that uh, goes to uh, pay for the police department. Am I correct? I don't believe that's correct. What is correct? Well, the budget is not finalized. Now, wait a minute. I'm talking about the budget we're under right now. Oh, the budget we're under? Uh, this month? The budget we're under right now is approximately two million sixty six thousand sixteen dollars and seventy one cents general fund. And how much of that is consumed by the police department? Well, I can't give you an approximate because I don't have the exact or a close total, but let's just say 600000 Okay. Uh, and that's divvied up between 12 officers. Let, let me make my point. Uh, we had a rather hefty tax increase last year, and the rumor mill says there is another one on its way. And this is not a rich town. So, uh, you know, you keep adding taxes, and sooner or later you're not going to have anybody living here. What I'm suggesting, and I love the police as much as I love the military. 
and I've been there for the better part of my life. Uh, but I just think maybe we ought to shrink the size of the numbers. In doing that, we can then afford to pay a better salary to the guys that we have. An option that you might consider, when I came here 15, 20 years ago, we had about three cops. Uh, I know the time is larger, so I'm not talking about going back to three. But one option you could consider is what we did back then is use the uh, county sheriff's office for work after hours. I'm just, I'm just throwing something out. You're wrestling with an elephant, he's losing guys, and when he's hiring him, he, chances are he's not going to get the best of the crop because they look at what they're getting paid. I don't know the two guys that he's losing, but I presume they were good officers. He's losing it for one simple reason, money. That's just a thought. Thank you, Mr. Dockman. Yes. All right, Mr. Cecilic. Good evening. My name is Marion Cecilic, 144 Arnold Street. Uh, Miss Council Lady Ruby Hines, you mentioned we're eleven thousand dollars in the negative, and after September we'll be in a positive. Yes. Uh, how much in a positive? Our Mr. Reshaver did not. Uh, give me those figures if he just said uh, when the funds come in we will we will be in the positive. Ten thousand, fifty thousand. Well we can't speculate. We have to wait to see what the 2013-2018 SWAS revenues are. You have a deficit of eleven thousand four hundred thirty-five dollars and sixty-six cents in May. The police department, as their portion of the SPLOS revenues, received $3,508.55. So if you quickly play that out and say in June, July, August, and September, you would get approximately $3,500 you quickly see that it's 14,000, and when you subtract 11,435, you see that that is approximately $2,500 to the positive. And what's they gonna buy again? I don't believe the question is what it's going to buy. The question is, it's revenue available. There is no set thing to buy. It's revenue available. How about two police cars, one for the chief, one for the lieutenant? What is the question? The question is, uh, you asked, what can you, I asked, what can you buy? And you said, um, you know, what do you mean or whatever? And I said, well, you know, you got two cars you can buy. You can buy one for the police chief, you can buy one for the lieutenant. Okay, let's not find the that. Uh, wait, when do you plan on buying um, or replacing those cars for the chief and the, and the lieutenant? That hasn't been decided yet. Okay. <clears throat> Council Lady Hines, uh, may I ask the police chief a question? Yes, sir. If I can answer. Okay. Uh, approximately on a percentage basis, how much are our officers underpaid 
with the surrounding areas. 10%, 15%. Just well, the problem that we have is not so much that we are comparing ourselves with another city, uh, uh, with, with uh, Hogansville or another city. The problem that we have is we are in the same jurisdiction as the Coweta County Sheriff's Department and, and, and the Noonan Police Department. So if they are paying 20% more than, and they are always short of deputies, they always have their applications out, they're always needing help, it's hard for us to find good applicants if they can go 10 miles an hour, 10 miles up the road for, 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 for a 20% uh, increase in pay plus a much better retirement. Uh, everybody uh, all around us, from Heard County to Franklin to uh, Hogansville to uh, Sonoy Police Department to Noonan Police Department to County County Sheriff's Department, Troop County, all the surrounding areas, they already offer uh, take home cars. I mean, that's the benefit they already offer. Um, and, and, and the problem that we have is that uh, if they're coming up here to put an application in, the first place you're going to put it into is County County because 20% more pay. Okay, so we can say that generally we're probably 20% under what well, everybody I'm, else would be. No, I'm not going to say 20% uh, of everybody. I'm just saying that, that that's, where, that's the, the struggle that we're fighting right now. Well, and, true. And we'll never be able to pay what Cowboy County pays. We, we understand that. Well, now, uh, but, but, but we should. Really? Well, we are a police we department. Be, we should. We have to be comparable to make people at least make this look visibly. You know, competitive, yes, an opportunity. Not, we don't want, you know. Well, Troop County is getting a 50, 15 increase. The paper said they were getting a 15 percent raise in October, another 15 percent next year. But what Troop County also did, and a lot of people understand this, they closed down their prison camp and kept, got rid of a lot of employees to take that money from the prison camp to give the county employees a raise. So you know, they're 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 giving and taking stuff like that too. So you know, that's something you got to look at also. And also, okay, well, we add, can do that here. Might I add about the, the police cars is we will need, we've got the oldest cars in the mm -hmm. fleet, but we don't go to these emergency well, we do go to the emergency calls too, but we're not the first responders at all times. Uh, and, and I think and, and uh, what we've done since, since day one, since we, my, myself and Lieutenant's been here, is we make sure that the first out people have the best equipment. That's right. Now, I have no problem driving the car I've got, oh, but I want to make sure the officers oh, have that. So, I, I, I want to get to my point here yes, sir. with them. Okay, so uh, as you just heard, you know, we're anywhere from, let's say, 10 to 30% with the two fifty percent increments uh, from Troop County. Uh, Council Lady Hines, uh, would you be prepared today? If you had a vote, would you be prepared today to vote for a 50% increase for our officers? No, I would not because I have will not have discussed it with the city manager, mayor, and my colleagues. So that's why I forestated uh, uh, previously. Uh, we okay. need to sit down and uh, discuss the whole situation and, and come up with a solution. And when I mentioned uh, about the chief and the lieutenant needing a car, that was in our discussion that forthcoming, they will need a car. Cars do wear out, as you well know. And I will, let me just add this. Uh, when uh, it was mentioned, uh, the reduction in officers. Right now, and please correct me if I'm in error, I believe our city is protected 24-7? Yes, ma'am. And uh, I think we need to uh, keep that in mind, that our citizen are, are protected. We, we do have a, 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 a large number, if you will, and I don't know if it's any larger than <coughs> other cities our size, but the main thing is protection to me. Yes, but um, I'm referring to, you know, their, their pay and their compensation package. Uh, Mr. King, uh, let me ask you the same question. Would you be willing to uh, well, let's say for a 10% modest uh, increase for the police department? With all the information I have at this time, I would say no. I believe it's something that needs to be sat down and discussed uh, as to what the city can afford. 
the uh, recommendation that we shrink the size of the police department, I am definitely against. Uh, 20 years ago, the world was quite different than what it is today. And the, in my opinion, the staffing that we have with the police department, I see them in my subdivision on numerous occasions doing their patrols. I believe that helps keep the crime down. I, burglaries, uh, assaults, uh, you know, they, they, they're just doing the right job. I am in favor of looking at it and seeing if we can better their pay package. To be honest, uh, $15 an hour to be a policeman, you put on that badge, you put on your, a target, and it wouldn't be worth it for me to do that job. Uh, not for $15 an hour. I probably wouldn't do it for $20 an hour. I probably wouldn't do it at all. But these fine men and women do do it. I believe they deserve to be paid a uh, competitive rate so we can keep them. We have good offices. Well, I think we need to figure out a way with the budget um, and the monies that we have, how we're going to make their package more attractive to stay here. Uh, hourly wage, 401ks, uh, there are many things that we can sit down and discuss, but we have to realize that we have to keep it affordable at the same time. Okay. We can't afford to lose not two police officers. We've lost 87. And um, I talked with probably 70% of the police officers, you know, from time to time. And um, money's the complaint. And um, Council Lady Hines, you mentioned you're going to run into a, you're going to have a conclusion when you talk with the mayor, the, the city manager, and I guess everybody else in the council. When do you think you will uh, have that discussion and when will you have that conclusion? Uh, Mr. Cecil, I think that uh, once we get back from Savannah, uh, that we can schedule a time that's going to be beneficial for all. Because I, I really think the chief of police or his desert need needs to be present as well. You know, and we just have a round table discussion on what, what can we do uh, that will make things better for our situation. So 60 days um, would be, or would you like 90 days? Uh, let's not go with 90 days. Uh, let's not put a time frame on it. Let, let, let me let's put this. a time frame on it. Uh, let me say this. Once we get back from Savannah, uh, let us look at the uh, calendar for all. Well, that's very disappointing, but hey. We don't want to disappoint you. Yeah, it'd be best one should, one in, you know, make a commitment. Let's say um, 70 days, where uh, that's plenty of time um, to discuss everything. And I mean, y'all know what's going on already. So, uh, you know, one day you ought to be able to come up with a decision. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, how many days, uh, what time frame would you would be pleasing to you? I want to be very... Uh, uh, easy going here, 70 days, 90 days. That would put us uh, uh, July, August, September. Um, don't you have the final preparations for the budget in October? The budget has to be passed by September the 30th, 2017. We will start budget discussions on July the 17th. So then by August the 17th, would that be enough time for you to talk about the police department? Well, we'll be talking about the entire general fund budget. Earlier, one of the speakers said last year we had a, ta we had a hefty tax increase. Might we all remember that in 2012, 2013, 2014, taxes were reduced so when the millage rate was raised, it only came up to the financial picture of 2012. 
So, while we talked, it was a ha healthy tax increase, it was only bringing us back prior to the draconian demise of the millage rate. Well, some people wouldn't think it's that draconian, but be that as it may. Uh, but back to the original question, so um, when can we have a conclusion, Mr. City Manager? Uh, what will be a good time for you? September the 30th, 2016. Okay. 27th, pardon me. What faux pas? Okay. Better be enough for now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, do we have any more uh, citizen comments? All right. Uh, Mr. King. Like I said, I think we have some work we need to do in reviewing uh, our pay structure and our benefit structure for our police department. The, uh, the subject of uh, replacing cars uh, from the numbers that we just ran, uh, I, don't know, I don't see how we're going to do it with uh, $2,500 in the splash fund after the uh, negative 11000 is squared up. But be that as it may, uh, those cars are going to wear out. I would have to suggest that we look at, uh, when we look at replacing police vehicles, we should be looking at other than Dodge Chargers because many, many uh, counties uh, are having difficulty with the Dodge Chargers with the engines. And um, the last thing we need is a police vehicle that <laughs> pulls an engine when it's responding to something. Uh, one thing I'd like to add is that one other aspect that involves the police department is what we're going to be doing in the future about these train incidents uh, and tractor trails. I am of the notion that the signs that we have posted don't work and um, perhaps we need to investigate uh, setting up a sign that says the driver is going to be fined for driving over a tractor trailer over those train tracks. Put a healthy number on it. I'd say 25,000. Other people would say a $10,000 fine. But I want to see something like that come about before somebody gets killed. Uh, that life would be worth whatever we have to spend on the signs. And that, that is one of my biggest concerns right now. As for the budget, uh, I'm looking forward to, to starting the review of that in July. Uh, I believe that there is room, there are things that we can do that will attract uh, good qualified individuals to the police department and also uh, retain the fine officers that we have at this time. And I look forward to starting that up, and starting that up next month and seeing just what we can actually do to make this better. So, thank you. Must appreciate it. I have nothing, man. Right. I just want to say one thing, Mr. King. Uh, on those signs that are posted, they're the wrong kind. I mean, they're what? They are the wrong kind. They show a low boy not to cross, not a picture of a tractor trailer. So when the tractor trailer drives by it, he thinks it's only for low boys. Yeah, but we've also got other signs further down Griffin Street that say no trucks, no tractor trailers. Maybe that's the only one he sees. I'm, I'm I just, mean, you know, I don't want to argue, I just want to put that out there. I personally think a nice billboard put up by those railroad tracks with a picture of the train crushing a tractor trailer might be in order. I can go for that. Council Member Hines, I did have one thing I apologize. Yes, sir. Uh, 
for the police committee's edification, I'll just tell you that the entire department went through a two-hour training block on due regard, which means due regard for the safety of others with vehicles, just the whole kaleidoscope of the training, how to handle different incidents, how to be out in the community, how to respond to an incident, how to handle your vehicle. So we're hoping that with this training, our police officers, again, um, it, it is just reinforcing their previous training, but it's always good to have it once a year. So that was a very, very positive thing I received today were the certificates of all the officers having gone through that training, which cost the city nothing. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bree Shaver. It's always good to uh, get additional training and knowledge in, in our job, in the job force. It just helps us all to be better. Uh, I just want to say thank you uh, to the citizen for your input to Chief Whitlock uh, for all your thoughts on what you're thinking. Uh, and, and again, I will reiterate, uh, this was just for informational purposes, this meeting today. But we're going to keep in mind uh, the splash fund, the budget, the resignation, the police uh, uh, cars, and uh, friends' benefits for our police officers. We're going to look at all of that. It takes time, as I first stated, that we need to come together and address all these issues and see what solution we can uh, arrive at. So that's all I have. Um, anything else? Yeah, nothing else? If nothing else, then I will entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. I would make the motion to adjourn. I will second it. Uh, this meeting is now adjourned at um, 535. Yep. Thank you so much for coming.